Just take a minute, settle into your space. Make sure that you're on mute. And together, Refuge in Bodhicitta. Sange chudon soge chunam lai jancho padu dani capsuchi dagi chun yen gi pe sonam gi rola penjir sange drupa shu sange chudon soge chunam la jancho padu dani capsuchi dagi chun yen gi pe sonam gi Roll up and cheer Sange Drupa Show. Sange Churon Sogi Chunamla. John Chupadu Dani Kapsuchi. Dagi Chun Yen Gipe Sonam Ki. Roll up and cheer Sange Drupa Show. And taking a minute to be with the meaning, letting refuge reconnect and Bodhicitta reconnect. And now shift your focus to the breath. Gentle and direct and simple. Just the breath. And if distractions are external stimuli or internal stimuli, you simply notice them and shift back to the breath, decisively on purpose, but without any tension or tightness.
adjusting if you start to sink or drift. Rebalance. And now shift to a gentle analysis by asking yourself, who is breathing? Who is watching the breath right now? And you know that the lungs are what are breathing because of the brain. But what controls the brain? Maybe circulation, maybe relationship with the nervous system, all sorts of interdependent factors to allow breath and continue breath, whether it's observed or not, almost as if the self had no role in breathing, that the self was merely labeled on that which breathes. And the outside air becomes inside air. And the old air within you becomes outside air. Plants are nourished by it. Plants nourish you from it. Oxygen in carbon dioxide, et cetera, out. Such a simple and elegant process, sustaining life. 
how infinitely interconnected with so many other factors. Even one of them missing and breath would stop. being aware of the interdependence, the dependent arising of breathing. Not self-creating or self-perpetuating. Nominally owned, not inherently owned, but there. So if that's how the breath is, who is it watching it? What aspect is seeing it or experiencing it? Where is that observer that knows breath? And there is that body, physical, tactile sense consciousness that is aware of sensation. There are mental factors describing it to yourself, saying it's a pleasant breath or an unpleasant breath deep and relaxed, or tight and anxious. There's the feeling of it, the description of it. If you want more of the same type or less of the same type, there's the holding your attention on it. in contact with the outer experience to the inner experience. And maybe layers of other mental factors on top of that, or distraction to other primary consciousnesses and their mental factors. Who is it watching the breath? Searching with curiosity, not needing to be sure or to find. Just gently investigate.
And then while maintaining whatever your breath is doing, the natural flow, imagine what it would be like if your breath was taken from you by shock and danger, or by being too far underwater and running out of air, by illness or sudden death. If you no longer had your breath, who is the one that would be afraid or alarmed by that? So just in your imagination, go to that place of breathlessness and picture the fear that might arise. Who is that? The one that's worried or panicked? Allow that sense of I that feels like it should be in control or is in control, afraid of losing it. the one that seems to shout for its existence, to exist, to be seen and known and sustained. That one who is alarmed at the idea of breathlessness, how do they seem to be? Like a tiny self within the body shouting for breath? Something hovering outside the body, willing life? Something pervading the body? How does it seem, the panicked I? And as soon as you look for it, it disappears or shifts form. Before you looked for it, it felt very solid, the worried one. But upon investigation, there's just a series of experiences and impressions
an interdependent play of countless things back and forth, inner and outer stimuli. And so see if you can conclude that the I is not the one who becomes breathless. The I is not the one who is worried about becoming breathless. There are those experiences, but they aren't the I. What if the I was only that which was labeled on the collection of parts and experiences? And anything extra or more that felt like a core wasn't there at all. How does it feel to find the non-finding of this object of negation, the inherently existent self? Is there even a relief to lose it? Or to allow it to dissolve back into the components it's labeled on? And then allow your analytical mind to start to go into the background and try and stay with that spacious clarity and awareness that's not centralized on self, but is still aware, still awake. somehow with the bare awareness, without being identified with the bare awareness.
and allow that spacious focus to come back to awareness of the breath, grounding yourself back in the body. Appreciative of the breath, but not identified with it. Feeling the vitality and strength of the body without identifying with it. and dedicate. Chancho sam jorim po che ma ke pa nam ke gyu chi ke pa nyam pa me pa yi gon he gon du pa wa sho don he da wa rim po che ma ke pa nam ke gyu chi ke pa nyam pa me pa yi May we actualize bodhicitta. May we realize emptiness. May all of this go towards benefiting sentient beings. And you can relax your attention. Okay.